Number 73, integrated concepts. Heat transfers from your lungs and breathing passages by evaporating water. Letter A, calculate the maximum number of grams of water that can be evaporated when you inhale 1.5 liters of 37 degrees Celsius air with an original relative humidity of 40%. And assume that the temperatures are the same. Okay, so what is relative humidity? Well, you have to remember that relative humidity is essentially just a fraction. It's equal to then the vapor density of water in the air divided by the maximum vapor density, aka the saturation vapor density, multiplied by 100. Just a simple fraction. So relative humidity, 40%. We can then calculate the actual amount of vapor density uh, in the air because the saturation vapor density, those are constants for certain temperatures. And this 44 gram per cubic meter is a constant for 37 degrees Celsius. So this would tell me the vapor density, right? So let's do it. So 40 times 44 divided by 100 then, it's about 17.6, 17.6, okay? This is then grams per cubic meter. All right. So, um, all right, so let's keep this in mind for right now. Next thing is to realize that we're inhaling then 1.5 liters of air, okay? So first thing is I want all consistent units, so I'm going to convert the 1.5 liters into cubic meters. So 1.50 liters, you know that there are 1,000 liters in one cubic meter. So this should be a simple uh, conversion. So this is just 0 0.0015 uh, cubic meters. So what I want to do is I want to actually find, I want to find the actual amount of water vapor inhaled per breath, okay? This is the volume of air per breath, and this is the vapor density of the actual air per breath. So what's the mass then of water vapor inhaled per breath? How do we find that? Well, if you notice, we can just do a simple dimensional analysis. We have cubic meters there, cubic meters here, so we can just do a simple multiplication, right? 17.6 17, 17 grams per cubic meter, meaning every cubic meter there are or there is this mass of water vapor. But we're not inhaling a cubic meter, we're inhaling a fraction of a cubic meter. So that would mean we're, in, we're inhaling a fraction of this total mass, right? I mean, that should, that should make intuitive sense. So this is how you do the calculation. So when you do calculate here, it's 0 0.0264 grams. And remember, this is really per breath. I mean, this is the volume right per breath. I could have said per single breath the bottom. So this is basically grams per breath. Don't worry about it in the calculations, just keep that in mind for later on probably. Um, okay, so this is the uh, mass of air that's actually inhaled, right? So if you're, you're this person, you can actually per breath, right, you're actually taking in 0 0.02664 grams of water vapor. Now let me ask you a question. What's the maximum amount of water vapor that's possible in this volume of breath? Well, the maximum density is this, right? It's 44 grams per cubic meter. So if I were to take that and then multiply it by the volume per breath, This is what the math would look like, right? We would take now 44 multiplied by 0 0.0015, and here we get about 0 0.066 grams per single breath. So what this now tells me is that we are inhaling this many grams, and the maximum amount of grams of water vapor in a volume of breath will be 0 0.066. So what that means is that's the theoretical maximum amount coming out, right? Coming out of our lungs, that's the theoretical maximum amount of water vapor in that volume of breath. So tell me, if this is the mass that comes in, and this is the mass, the maximum amount that can leave, because that's all that that air is going to hold, okay, at 37 degrees Celsius, where does the difference come from? Well, the difference would come from the amount that is then additionally evaporated inside of the lungs. 
So I can then take, if that's the case, I can then take the 0 .06, 0 0.066 grams and subtract now the 0 0.0264. Hopefully this makes intuitive sense. To find then the amount that I can evaporate into the air, right? 0 0.066 minus 0 0.0264. And we get about 0 0.0396. 0 0.0396 grams. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the maximum amount that you can add to the air, not the maximum that's allowed in the air. This is the max allowed in the air, but the maximum amount that you are allowed to add to the air, meaning to evaporate into the air, if you breathe in 0 0.0264 grams, would be this number. That's letter A. Okay. So sometimes you gotta, sometimes you have, and remember that this is also per breath. Right, this is a value per breath. Okay, um, it doesn't want it. It doesn't necessarily say per breath, but I mean they're talking about a single. This you're inhaling 1.5 liters. So part of the sometimes it's very difficult to start at the end. What I like to do sometimes is start with what I'm given and then work off of that and see what I'm finding vapor density. What exactly does that mean? You know, and relative humidities, all that. And you know, you kind of piece it together then as you go. It's a little rough to, I think, start at the end of this. you got to kind of move forward a little bit. Um, anyway, letter B. So how many joules of energy are required to evaporate this amount? Well, what amount? This amount. What's the evaporation heat formula, basically? Well, there it is over there on the right-hand side. This says that the heat involved in a phase change will equal the mass that is changing phase multiplied by the latent heat or fusion or vaporization, depending upon the phase change you're talking about. We're talking about evaporation, therefore we're talking about uh, heats of vaporization. So now remember, uh, I need to plug in the mass, but we have it in grams, but 396, just divide that then by 1000 to get into kilograms. Uh, the latent heat of vaporization, gotta look that up, right? That's for water. This is a constant, 20, uh, 2256, but that's kilojoules. Convert that into joules by adding the three zeros. And voila, all we now, all we now need to do is calculate. So take that, divide it by 1000, then multiply that by 2256000. And here we get about 89.3. So here is about 89.3. 89.3. And what do we have? Uh, this is in terms of joules. Okay. So that is the energy that's required in joules to evaporate. Now, letter C. What is the rate of heat transfer in watts? from this method if you breathe at a normal resting rate of 10 breaths per minute. Okay, remember that this is the amount of joules that are going to be involved in the in the heat transfer per breath. Remember, everything was per breath, right? I kept saying per breath, per breath. So this is also per breath. Now, if I start with that value, right? If I do a little dimensional analysis here, complicated name for just conversion, 8.9, uh, 89.3 joules per breath. And I know I'm breathing at 10 breaths per minute, right? I know I got to somehow get this into watts. The key idea is to realize that a watt is simply a joule per second. That's what you're looking for. So I got to cancel breaths, right? So breaths have to go on the top. 10 breaths, they told us. I'll just going to abbreviate it B. Per what? Per one minute. Now look, the breaths cancel, you're left with joules per minute. <gasps> you're left with a joule in energy per time. And that's what watts are, or watt is, right? It's joule per second though. Oh, so that's easy now. It's just minute to seconds, one minute, 60 seconds, and voila, all done. So take that value, multiply it by 10, divided by 60, and here we get about 14.9. So this is about 14.9, and that's going to be in terms of now... Uh, what do we get? What do we get? Uh, watts, right? Or joules per second, whatever you whatever you prefer. Okay. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully this helps. Please remember to give us a hand, subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends if we're able to help you. Your friends also might find it helpful too. And it's free. Take care.